The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Sadly, we have to pour one out for another Chicago iconic landmark. Now, I said the people of Elk Grove Village may know about this more than others around the Chicagoland area. That's where we're going, and maybe you know what I'm about to say. But for two decades, Heavenly Bodies, actually 35 years overall, Heavenly Bodies, an adult entertainment club, a strip club, has existed over there. I think people in the area have driven by it or have you heard its name before, whether you go to them or not. A lot of Heavenly Body jokes out there. Yeah. <laughs> kind of the go-to, you know. I got to say, a pretty good name, too. You know what I mean? I yes, Heavenly right. I don't think you should be bringing heaven into it. It's a little inappropriate. <laughs> I didn't think about that part. Yeah. I didn't go that way. Yeah. Anyway, it's it's closing. It's gone. Elk Grove Village bought the property for Heavenly Bodies and neighboring properties for $6.15 million. Uh, now, here's what happened, though. The journey of this sale is unbelievable. So let's let's go on this journey right now. For two decades, the Elk Grove Village mayor, Craig Johnson, had a gentleman's agreement with the owner of the Gentleman's Club, Heavenly Bodies. He's... I just think the word gentleman is always used very loosely. It's like the opposite. <laughs> it's always kind of like the opposite of that. Like, maybe, probably not a Gentleman's Club, huh? Uh, well, you know, you go there for bachelor parties or whatever. I, I, I'm a not... gentleman getting together. Listen, I have been to this establishment before, and I've been to some other ones. It's been a long time. Uh, I would hope so. It's been a long time uh, since I've been there. But anyway, uh, the mayor said... Take my community's name out of your radio commercials or I won't annex you into the town. This was a longstanding thing to do and basically said. Uh, that so if you advertise, just don't say the name of the like the town or yeah, city or whatever is what they're saying? Yeah, don't say Elk Grove Village, like Heavenly Bodies, Elk Grove Village. And they weren't in, apparently, Elk Grove Village. It was annexed right near the southwest corner of Higgins and Elmhurst Roads are being annexed into the village. But... That he didn't want that called in there because they were not in Elk Grove Village. But it was obviously an iconic way to say where they are, right? right. I mean, people know where it is. So village board members agreed this week to pay $6.15 million for five separate parcels. So it includes Heavenly Bodies, a shuttered Burger King restaurant. Boy, they're dropping like flies, Burger King. I, we got to talk it. about it. It's an epidemic at this point. It's I mean, awful. They're not going to make it. Does anybody have, Has anybody seen an open Burger King anywhere? Man, not, there not enough. There is one near me oh, that's yeah? open in Elgin. Yeah. Um, not busy, but it's open. Okay. Kenzie, will you go by there after the show and just make sure that you're doing your part to keep Burger King open? I will not eat at Burger King. I'm on a diet and I've lost seven pounds over. Okay, mm. but what if you gained all the seven back in one meal? That sounds bad. That sounds like, you know, I'm not sure, fun. I'm sure the on- I, I won't have a heavenly body, <laughs> that's for sure. Facts. I'm sure the onion rings are healthy. I'm sure oh, they're my, fine. Well, it's a, it's a vegetable. It's an onion. I left the Metro on Friday and thought, you know what I want right now? Burger King. But the one on Irving Park shut down. Yeah. And so we can't have nice things anymore. Nope. Nope. We can't do that. So they bought that whole piece of land. Also, uh, a marathon gas station and a couple parking lots. So there was Heavenly Bodies, the shuttered Burger King, a marathon <laughs> gas station, and a couple parking lots for $6 million. That's going to be annexed into Elk Grove Village. Wow. Doesn't that seem like too much money for what that list is? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it sounds like a go- bag of crap for $6 million. Well, when I continue in the story, you might realize how valuable Heavenly Bodies was. So... Um, the, the, this is the part that's kind of funny that they they it's going to close June seventeenth. It opened in nineteen eighty nine. Heavenly well, Bodies. After Father's Day. <laughs> just, uh, just is, that what, is that Father's Day or is it the sixteenth? June sixteenth. So after Father's Day, <laughs> you know, get the specials in. <laughs> <laughs> Can't miss out on that. Oh, I mean, it's been there thirty five years, and a lot of times you hear about a, a strip club closing for whatever reason, you know, illegal activity or there's always just some kind of incident and it closes, but. This one's closing because it got bought, which seems rare to me. It's a rare, and 35 years to stay open is incredible. But people thought then the village was going to run Heavenly Bodies. The mayor didn't like that either. The town, the town president, if you will, uh, because no, we're annexing it and then it's closing. Oh, they thought it was going to be. People thought the city was going to run this, it. Dalton, calm down. <laughs> what is this going to happen? So the owner sadly passed away uh, in the last month, and they've been in talks with a potential to purchase it. Uh, as a who real does, estate so investment. So who does it go to? The nope. owner passed away to his children. He, he, like, he left he, it to his children. He's got a wife. Oh, that's and interesting. So the wife definitely uh, still wants to, uh, agreed to selling it and moving on with I it. I bet she did. And getting the money. Was he poisoned? Hey, listen. <laughs> when, well, again, when you hear about the money that was going into this place, uh, I think a happy wife, happy life. I think that money coming in would have been just fine. Ooh. 
Um, for example, in 2003, investigators found $12 million in cash inside bags stashed away at a warehouse behind Heavenly Bodies. In cash? In cash! $12 million. Were they stealing the tips? Why would they have that? <laughs> because it's a cash business that people spend tons of money in. They're not still, I, I was, I, was that, not, oh, like it was a cash bar and stuff? Just every, everything that came through. I mean, I, I don't know 100%. I didn't do the investigation. What is this, Ozarks? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I'm not buying it. Yeah, federal federal prosecutors, prosecutors said it was unreported income, meaning they had other income they reported besides the $12 million. Huh. We, should, we should open one of these. We have to. That's the, that makes sense. <laughs> this is the lesson out of this, is that there's now an opening in the strip club marketplace. <laughs> well, not until after Father's Day, June no, 17. Well, we, need, we need time to scale up, too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We'll buy one of those parking lots back from them. <laughs> it's empty. So right here in Elk Grove Village, right next door, I didn't want them to say. <laughs> Holy cow, $12 million in cash in bags behind the place. I want to hear from the dancers, because I feel like they didn't receive everything they were supposed to. I wonder if it was one of those crappy strip clubs are like, well, we're going to pool the ones and we'll get back to you because, mm-hmm. come on. I don't know. I, I mean, I also think that they made, they could have easily made that much money. I mean, obviously, it was it was a packed time. 2003, a great year, you know? You know, so <laughs> I used to, I liked the uh, the poor man's Victoria's Secret. I always liked Fredericks of Hollywood and now that's closed, RIP. Oh, that. is it all gone? I, as far as I was concerned, maybe this is a standalone somewhere, but they, they closed. Yeah. And I'll never forget I was in a Fredericks because they actually sold like cute shoes and stuff. Like I bought a dress there for a you wedding. Don't have, you don't have to be defensive I'm about saying, shopping there. You sound like you're defensive. I was a waitress, okay? And so I was paying with like a lot of ones, fives, tens, I was paying. Mm. And she was like, oh, we actually got new dancers' shoes in. Like, and I go, <laughs> I go, oh no, I'm not a stripper. She goes, they never are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I, I literally work at Famous Dave's like barbecue sauce all over me. It sucks. Brian and Kenzie in the morning. And Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. We poured one out for the Gentleman's Club, Heavenly Bodies, that's closing up in Elk Grove Village because uh, the the owner sadly passed away and the wife is selling the property to Elk Grove Village and they're going to use it for something else, and they're going to annex it as part of Elk Grove Village. Now, the mayor was very upset that the guy that owned it had used Elk Grove Village in the name when he would talk in any kind of advertising about it. But at this point now, it's going away, and people then get confused that Elk Grove Village will be running Heavenly Bodies. But it is not. It'll be going away. Now, we have Bianca, who I'm not sure if she works there now or worked there in the past. Bianca, ahoy, what's going on? Hello. Hi. I actually am a part of the management team. Bianca is an alias because, unfortunately, due to some other business endeavors, I cannot give out my name. Oh. Um, <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> uh huh. Um, so, like, I, I'm I'm pretty high up on the management team. Um, but yeah. So, what questions do you guys have? So you still work there right now, correct? You're still as as, as the last couple of weeks here. I've been there for 15 years. Wow. Well, first off, we're really sorry because I assume that when this closes, uh, you will no longer be working there. There's no there's no corporation to keep going, correct? We dissolved everything, but I have another business outside of that. That's why I'm Bianca today. Hmm. Hey, Bianca. Okay. <laughs> now, let, let's get to it. Since you have a fake name, they don't know who's calling in. It's all secret. Why was there twelve million in cash in a different building? Oh, that was, was that, that was back in two thousand three. Was that somebody? Was that the dancers' tips or what's going on? It had nothing to do with the dancers' tips. I think you guys kind of have like a skewed version of what happened with everything. Mm. But unfortunately, I can't really get into that. But if you do dig a little bit more, the owner actually received that money back. He had a lawsuit, and um, read into the story a little bit more why he was arrested and it actually had nothing to do with the 12 million dollars so i'll just give you that as a little kernel for you to investigate more yeah we were reading from the daily herald story that was in there about that and that situation where the federal prosecutors then said there was tax money not paid that story is disgusting um Mm. and it really depicts the club in a horrible light so daily herald hi bianca really doesn't like you guys right now you had a chance (laughs) to do um, a really nice article about the club closing and the hundred and you know fifty people that are losing their jobs, but instead you chose violence. And we actually will be issuing out a press release in regards to that. Okay. 
Oh, I was getting spicy. And listen, whenever something closes and there's been so many we've been pouring one out with around Chicago, we always uh, are very upset about that because obviously people like to say things in comments, but eventually are obviously people will lose their jobs. So right. it sucks. Now, something less dramatic, Bianca, because I pass sure. Heavenly Bodies a decent amount and I see the advertisement. What is on a booby burger that's so special? Okay, so a booby burger is <laughs> it, one fourth of a pound of hamburger meat. It's cheeseburger, pick, pickles, lettuce, onions, tomatoes. On a sesame seed um, bun. Also, <laughs> there's also a proprietary seasoning. So if you guys go look at boobyburger.com, which we're still keeping, we're actually going to have food trucks out hopefully this year. Oh my. Um, yeah. And and then the owner, he was very specific about the burger. Uh, we didn't do this, but he wanted like a pick going down the middle, and he wanted an olive on top of. Uh, on top of the bread. <laughs> but, but that never worked out. But actually, out of the booby burgers, we actually just added like mini booby burgers. So as you can guess, like um, if you're going off of broth sizes, like a 32A booby burger. And then you have the double D booby burger, which includes bacon. You know what, Kenzie? Oh. I think this food truck should come to Tristan's next birthday party. Boy, he's 11. He's a man. Yeah. <laughs> <Do this. laughs> well, that's good to know that that part of the business is continuing and hopefully it keeps a couple people employed that work on the burger part of Heavenly Bodies. Yeah. That's closing, sadly. Yeah. We, we have some uh, things in the works, and we're actually working to help the girls find uh, jobs at other clubs. So we'd like to invite everyone out this Saturday to our closing party. It's called the HB's Last Dance. And uh, any club owners out there or even people like that are downtown nightclubs that are looking for girls for bottle service servers, look at this like an, a job fair, but you can come out and drink. And- <laughs> well, you know who should be there? <laughs> <laughs> Who should be there is Blackjacks because they have not not had a dancer's wanted sign <laughs> for like 15 years. Right. We, we actually love Blackjacks. They are a great club um, and, you know, they're obviously invited. We will invite them personally. Oh, well, I got to say I may come out uh, it's Saturday night. Is this? Yeah. If you guys are coming out, you guys, please come be my guest. You can ask for Bianca. And you will actually meet me and know who I really am when you get there. Mm. It's like Batman. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I like to be more like Charlie. Okay, I'm fine with that too. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. All right, let's get to this. The fact that makes your brain just go. I want to make a note before we get here because I said people will check in the instantly. I mentioned this fact that to do this job, but we have an outage right now on our text line. So if you want to get through with a message to us, you absolutely have to call. We love hearing your voice anyway. We love when you call in. 312-591-8300. We'll let you know when the text line's back up and running properly. I think it was a, a Russian hack. Uh, it's trying to stop you from communicating with us here on the show. Well, and it's I, an election year. I take that very personally. I just think the text line is like, hey, it was Monday. I think it's exhausted. It's overslept. Just, just didn't his alarm didn't go off. Yeah, it's Monday. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. He he puts ooh. in just as many hours as we do Monday through Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's exhausted. Is the text line a he or a she? Oh, I, I thought it was a guy. <laughs> Why? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was, it's lazy. Didn't wake up this yeah. morning. <laughs> Facts. So, uh, but again, if you want to get through and you have a message, if we're not reading it on the air, it's because we're not getting those messages unless you call in for the next few minutes at least. So here is the fact that I said that certain people in Chicago do this job and or this, uh, this happens to them on their job. And we used to be number one. A year ago, we were number one at this. Now we're number three. So that's good it's going down, but we're not out of the top three. And that is postal workers getting bit by dogs. Fifty-eight hundred in America last year. Fifty-eight hundred dog bites to postal workers. That's up five hundred from a year ago. And I know we have real the mailman. At least one of our mailman uh, hardcore listeners here. But Chicago came in number three. So Los Angeles was number one with sixty-five. Houston number two with fifty-six. And then Chicago forty-eight. We should not be that high up on the list because of how cold it is so often. Facts. But I don't know. Can dogs? They still like going in the snow, and they can still bite in the snow, right? But you know, what? like it, it should be all warm weather. Like that's because it's not biggest city. Because then New York would be one, then LA two, then us three. 
So for it to go L.A. and then Houston, which that adds up because, like, more people outside, you know, more dogs chilling outside. <laughs> they just chill out the front just yard. Just vibing in the front yard. I get it. But, like, this doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, and listen, we got to, you know, our people out there with your pets, you know, make sure you secure them when the postman comes or if they know the postman and, and they go up to him and they... I've seen a lot of great heartwarming videos of dogs going to greet the postman. In Chicago. Well, I really? think that's what people think is going to happen. And then their dog just attacks them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, doggy. Uh, I mean, unless he wants to get detailed or not, not, but in case the producer went through a horrific dog attack on his girlfriend's dog recently. But it was to the dog. It was to yeah, the dog. I, and, and I didn't do it either, just to be clear. No. Did that make, make it sound like you bit the dog? Kind of, yeah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> case no. has anger issues. I mean, I... We had a situation where there were two loose, non-leash dogs in the neighborhood, and the story that the owner of the attacking dogs claims is that a postman delivered some packages, they didn't lock the gate, the dogs got out, they ran after the first thing they saw, which was unfortunately my girlfriend and my dog, and, you know, thousands of dollars of vet bills later, luckily our dog is doing better now, so. Yeah, I mean, it's brutal. I've had, you know, we've heard about this behind the scenes more, and... You've got to secure your dog if you think your dog is can be like, you know, that unpredictableness of a dog when they see a now stranger. In fairness, not in case, not case story, that one's bad. Now, in fairness, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pretty bad. Pretty bad. And, and These also, dogs may be secured, but mailmen have to go on your property. Well, that's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? When you, I mean, I know that you don't know exactly when the postman's coming sometimes, but also there's got to be a better way to leave, not leave your dog out there when the in the path of the postman. Now, I have to say, every day I go on a walk uh, with my baby in the stroller, and there's nothing more terrifying as you're walking up to a house and there's a dog growling and you're playing the, do they have an invisible fence game? Or are they just outside? <laughs> and I shake and I'm like, I'm gonna, am I going to die? Or is there an invisible fence there? And they start running full speed and you're wondering yes. if there's, it's going to hit them or not. And then they, get, they zap and fall yeah. to the ground. You're like, Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they make that big turn. Like they know uh, where the fence is yeah. by now. And they and like, and they just mm-hmm. follow the, the border. Yeah, there's like this oh. dance on it. I'm like, I really miss the signs that said, like, don't worry, it's an invisible fence because people don't like them because the signs are ugly, but everyone else is just scared <laughs> all the time. Yeah. I would love a sign. I'm sure HOA say you can't have those signs up. It would really be nice to have those signs up to say you've got an invisible fence. It's I understand. a dangerous game every day where I'm yeah. like, oh, I hope. I'm not very fast, so if we're, <laughs> like, we're not... We're not going to make it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I'm aware of that. Yeah. I'm not outrunning anything. And Kenzie saw some labradoodle sitting there growling at uh-huh. her, too. A little <laughs> <laughs> I really wonder, because I know Chicago government isn't the most efficient or effective thing that's ever existed. Yep. But I'm trying to think of what's changed in the last year that could make us fall from number one to number three. And now I wonder if the first day Brandon Johnson got in office, he was like, hey, guys, I know we have a lot to do, a lot to work on. <laughs> We have to talk about the dog biting mailman situation first. We cannot lead the nation in this any longer. Yeah. We well, can't find good mailmen anymore because of it. That's right. That's right. Who would want to be a mailman if you're just served up there as a steak, you yeah. know, for a dog? I mean, it's not right. That's a tough life. Our society's gonna collapse. Also, we probably don't need mail anymore. I mean, I'm just I putting, disagree. I'm, put, I'm putting that out there. I mean, well, I'll tell you what, people are still getting my baby shower invites. I have to clarify <laughs> that. I'm, I have to clarify that I'm not pregnant again. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. You can't defeat her. She's too powerful. Clash with Kenzie. <laughs> Let the battle begin. Q101. And Clash with Kenzie is brought to you by the Schaumburg Boomers. Tickets, visit boomersbaseball.com. Get to a game. It's a blast. And we have uh, Natalie competing today against Kenzie in trivia for the Rainbow Kitten Surprise Show. Credit Union One Arena, that show will sell out, and you'll be there if you beat Kenzie. Natalie, tell us something really quick about yourself. Hey, guys. um, I love your show. I listen every morning. Um, And then Case asked me to think something interesting, and all I could think of is that I'm taking my cats to the vet right now, Mm. and I think it's because it's Rainbow Kitten Surprise, so I'm just like, cat. Oh, it's like meant to be. I see what's going it's on. It's destiny, exactly. if you will, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you for listening, and I hope your cats are okay. Hope everything's going to be fine. Yep, just the normal checkup. All good. Mm. <laughs> but the cat doesn't know that, right? 
No, they're very upset. <laughs> yeah. Like clawing at the cage or on the ceiling of the car, yeah. like hanging upside down, <laughs> like biting you. Like this, <laughs> oh, yeah. This, what, do you, what do you think cats are? <laughs> I just don't know who wants to go to the doctor. I used to have this, like, more, like, cloth carrier instead of, like, a, like a tough kennel. And it would zip shut at the top. And my cat would push his face against the zipper so hard it would start to open. It was, it was going like getting burst again. I'm like, please? And then you would just see me like pushing my hand, like pushing his face. I'm like, get in the curse. Oh, Stop man. It. If they only knew it was going to be okay. Uh, it's going to be fine when you get to the doctor. Uh, I feel so bad when I leave my house for like 10 minutes, but I leave the dog behind and the dog thinks I'm gone for the whole day. I'm like, brother, I'm going to be right back. You're not even going to know I'm gone, but he just you give me the puppy dog face. It's awful. I don't want to keep going on this this thread here, but have you ever seen the videos where people put a camera up when they leave the house and mm-hmm. see what their dog does? It's so sad. Oh my yeah. God, is it sad? Because <laughs> they think you're leaving forever every time. I imagine cats do too. I don't think cats care. Well, I think you guys, I have a dog. Mm. Oh, you- I have a dog at home too, so he thought I'm leaving him all alone without the cats even. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, oh, so she took her favorite laugh. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to take that so personal. I hope you know that. <laughs> yeah, I would think cats would just go like, God, Natalie's finally out of here. Cool. She left me home alone. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> now I can just lay under the bed. And just sit there all day. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. So first one to five wins. Listen carefully. If uh, Kenzie gets one wrong, you can steal a point. She can do the same to you. Call heads or tails right now, Natalie. Tails. Ah, it's heads. Okay. <laughs> all right, Kenzie. Question number one. What did Rumpelstiltskin spin into gold? Um, Straw. Straw's right. Nice trick. Uh, Natalie, on which streaming service would you watch The Bear? Hulu. Hulu's right. One to one. June 27th, season three? That sounds right. I think that's when it drops. Oh, that was the start of the first question. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. Yeah. Good Lord. I have to uh, know the drop when it's going to start. Back to Kenzie, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Kenzie, what doubles as both a country and a film franchise that sees Chris Rock voice a zebra? Oh, Madagascar. Very right. How many movies are I there? Like of the movie, of movie. Madis- <laughs> it's not- is there more than one? I There's thought, three. Really? There's yeah. a lot. Okay. There's You'll Madagascar. find out. Harper's yeah. not there yet, but boy, will you find out. There's it's, a lot of all of these movies. I usually love those animated movies. Uh, we're on like the 17th Minions movie. <laughs> just, just wait. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, two to one back to Natalie. Natalie, which two movie criminals drove their car off of the Grand Canyon instead of surrendering? Oh, crap. Uh-huh. Yes, two criminals, three? Two. One. Um, one. I have no idea. Kenzie, you know? Uh, Thelma and Louise. Thelma and Louise. Iconic scene. Brad Pitt, first movie in that. First My one. Dad. First one's in that one. Interesting. Never seen it. His first movie, he got the lead? No, he wasn't the lead. He oh, was. I don't, it, I don't remember. He I was wasn't. Like, he was not Thelma or Louise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they did pick him up. He's so good looking in that movie. As, as he's good looking now at sixty. Oh wow! I was gonna say I don't know if you know this, but Brad Pitt looked really good in his movie. But I mean, I don't some, remember that at all. Some people grow in, like when they're like eighteen, they look better later. He looked good all the way through. Yeah, I know. He's just he's doing pretty good. He's doing all right. <laughs> doing pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Three to one back to Kenzie. Kenzie, what fictional detective is often depicted smoking a pipe while wearing a deer stalker hat? Uh, Sherlock Holmes. That's right. Kenzie's got four. I didn't know that was the name of the hat. but I didn't either. I only know so many detectives that smoke pipes, so I decided <laughs> to roll with it. Is it okay to wear a deer stalker hat? Like, are you stalking a deer? Is that, it sounds, seems... You think you'd be small. Why would you pick a big hat? Yeah, it's a big hat. Because it brings attention to you. It's got like two rims on the front also, and the back. Also, not a great hat for a spy, now that I'm thinking about it. It brings a lot of attention. You're wearing that hat. That's a spy. Yeah, I, I a huge pipe. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Back to Natalie. It's back to Natalie. Four to one. She needs a point here. Uh, Natalie, hibachi is a traditional heating device from what country? Japan. Japan's right. That's good, but Kenzie can win with the next question. <laughs> That's rough. Hebrews. Don't do it, Kenzie. Oh, well, don't make me feel bad. Uh, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Kenzie, what did Yankee Doodle call the feather on his hat? And he called it macaroni. Oh, God. <laughs> Just beat the buzzer. I had to sing it. I don't know. Oh, boy. Natalie, I'm sorry. 
That's okay. I realize Kenzie is actually incredible at trivia, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, so are you. You're doing pretty good. Hey, you did good. <laughs> Sorry, girlfriend. But you could still win by, like, no calling. Way. You know, that's the thing. Yeah, Natalie, why don't you hang up real quick? You're not to the vet yet. And then right after Noah Khan, we'll ask everybody to call up again. Everybody listening now has a chance at the Rainbow Kitten Surprise tickets. So just stay right here with Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101.